So our next speaker up is going to be Valentine Murray. Thank you. Well, hi, I'm uh, Valentine. I'm uh, from McAfee. And today I'm going to be presenting about attackers thinking graphs. Uh, I was going to present this with Samantha, but unfortunately, uh, I'm going to be alone. So uh, building graphs for threat intelligence. Here we go. So uh, as mentioned before, my name is Valentine uh, or Valentine, and um, I'm from McAfee, the ATR team, uh, which is the Advanced Threat Research Team. And what we do is, so at least our main goal is to uh, identify and make sense of the broad threat landscape that we have uh, in today's world. And my background is red teaming and blue teaming, and I'm also the organizer of the Women in Cybersecurity Group of the Netherlands. Uh, besides this, I'm a writer, I love cats and Dungeons and Dragons, and you can follow me on Twitter. Um, so what we'll talk about today is uh, all the data that we have at McAfee uh, ATR about threats and attacks, uh, the questions we have about that data, how do we uh, build graphs based on the data, graphs, graph algorithms to answer questions about the data, issues with the data, and conclusions we can draw from the data. So as you can see, it's a lot of data. Um, so basically, this is uh, what our team is building currently is a broad uh, overview of threats and threat profiles and everything and everything about these threats. So MITRE techniques, uh, threat actors, sector targeted, country targeted, and all of this. But in the back end, it basically looks like this uh, because we are using MISP, uh, which is a uh, very powerful tool to uh, deal with a lot of threat intelligence. And what we do is we get threats and attacks and um, events uh, in MISP, and we divide this into MITRE techniques, uh, target information, threat actors, sectors, tools used, et cetera. And this is what it kind of looks like in the back end. But um, what we have in MISP is a bunch of lists of data and everything uh, is all packed in these uh, kind of huge lists. So how do we connect all this information? How do we visualize connections between events in MISP? So connections between threats, uh, threat actors, attacks, MITRE technique used, and all of that. How do we identify trends in the data and what are we missing? And this is where I looked to uh, graphs to answer these kind of questions. And uh, based on the data we have, I had more sub questions, more specifically towards uh, MITRE techniques used by threat actors and identifying patterns in these uh, techniques used uh, for this talk. And these uh, sub questions that I got are based um, on the data that we have in MISP. And it's frequency questions, popularity questions, and Patterns, so identifying patterns like are actors using the same techniques in the same way? Uh, can we identify uh, groups of actors using the same techniques? So the way uh, I represented the data uh, or originally was event-based. So we have technique used in event, tool used in event, uh, targeted country, uh, attributed to actor, and targeted sector. And this is basically what the output was. So by graphing all the events in this representation, we have this huge, uh, big, big blob of, uh, of a graph. Um, so the first thing we do notice is that it's very dense and highly connected. And the second thing we do notice as well is that we have a very sparse sector and country information. So in the events that we have in MISP, um, often uh, either the country is not reported because uh, it just targets every country and there's no specific country or an attack is uh, directed at multiple sectors. So this is why we chose in our event centric representation to just scratch the uh, country and sector node. Um, and then we just collapse the uh, event nodes to create a actor centric representation to answer uh, questions that are more about behavioral patterns, uh, so actors using MITRE techniques. So I'm going to be showing different uh, things on these two representations, so event-centric and actor-centric. So this is our event-centric graphs graph, and this is the actor-centric graph. So to answer the question, which techniques are observed most often, one way to answer this question is to look at degree analysis. So degree analysis is just looking at nodes that are directly connected to one node. So in uh, an event node or a technique node that is connected to a whole bunch of events is basically the most popular technique. In order to answer this question about um, uh, which techniques um, are the most common across actors, then we need to look at the actor-centric graphs for the behavior of these actors. And we use centrality algorithm on uh, an actor node. And then uh, we look at the MITRE techniques that are mostly uh, most connected to it. And then we have, for example, uh, in this case, it was obfuscated files or information. This is the most used technique across actors 
based on the data that we have. And then can we identify groups of actors using the same techniques? In the actor study graph, uh, we apply community detection algorithms to basically be able to cluster actors together. But one thing that we did notice is that the graph was still very, very dense. And there were no, at least using the Chinese whisper uh, algorithm, there were no clusters that were identifiable. If we use the Louvain uh, detection cluster, uh, cluster detection algorithm, then we do find something, but it's still not um, completely, uh, for, that we can say for sure that these uh, clusters are valid. And then based on our data, we have one more question to answer, which is, uh, are actors using the same, are use, actors using techniques in the same way? So we look at the actor-centric graph, but it's still quite a, a dense cluster. So um, in this case, we wanted to introduce more information to maybe be able to differentiate actors uh, in a smarter way. So what we did is introduce kill chain information. So a technique that belongs to a specific kill chain step. So this is the new representation proposed, actor uses technique and technique is used for this specific step. And this is the resulting graph. Uh, the problem is that it's still a um, quite a dense graph. Uh, the only th the thing that we have that is kind of isolated from the rest is on the top right. And this is the uh, actually the mobile uh, tax. So that's why it's isolated from the rest. So, the reason why we have this um, issue, let's say, is basically something else. It's the MISP granularity level that is just not good enough if we want to use a uh, kill chain step, if we want to introduce kill chain step to be able to differentiate uh, what actors are doing and how they're using these techniques. Just simply because in MISP, uh, a technique that is used across multiple steps is uh, saved um, uh, the same way. So there's no way to say this actor used this technique for this specific step. So it would be really nice to have that in MIS, to be able to have this differentiation when exactly an actor used the technique because it is registered when you store it in the uh, in MISP in that event, uh, it, it will store all the steps that is uh, connected to that technique and not just one that you want. So that would be nice to have. Um, and then uh, what we also notice from the data that we have is that actors seems to seem to be using the same steps all the time. At least there is this big cluster in the middle where it's just all the same techniques that everybody's using. So maybe we, if we scratch these techniques out, then we would see the least used techniques and that could be an interesting thing to do. So this is for uh, future work. So conclusions about building graphs the right way. Uh, as I mentioned before, we talk a lot about data. So you have to know your data, you have to know how to represent it the right way if you want to make something concise and if you want to use uh, the algorithms as well to, for, to, have, uh, to, uh, to be able to answer your questions and answer your specific questions. And building graphs helps us visualize data instantly. It helps us make sense of the data that we see and it helps us connect things together. But you have to know your data and you have to know how to represent it the right way. But we still have a few questions that remain. And uh, one of them being, how do we add more granularity? Uh, is the data we receive com complete enough? And maybe we could incorporate additional sources uh, that would help us to actually have this differentiation between threat actors and their behaviors on how they use these techniques. That's it. I think I'm pretty good on time. <laughs> Very good on time. Thank you. That was, that, was, uh, that was great. And as personally, I'm a visual learner. So I appreciate any one time someone takes like, you know, raw data and puts it in a form that just I digest a lot easier. So def <laughs> definitely appreciate the work you're doing. I think first off, one of the biggest questions we're getting in Slack is what um, are you using a particular library or tool to make your visualization? Is that like Neo4j or something? Or is that a proprietary? Um... It, it's a proprietary tool. Yeah, it's from uh, actually Samantha could have said more about this, but <laughs> it's a uh, it's a in-house uh, tool that is built in-house from up level security okay. uh, that is now owned by McAfee. But you said it's, it's, it's ingesting the, the raw data from MISP, correct? Oh, uh, no, we have to have a step in the middle uh, to okay. uh, basically pull the JSON out of MISP and then put it in the graphs. Okay, tracking. Um, so one of the interesting things you mentioned, and I, I kind of have two um, related questions here. The, the interesting concepts is, you know, you have the data going in and then you can identify as much as you can about that data, but then there's the conclusions that come out of that. Kind of walking us through that pipeline you know, what is your you know, approach or kind of, you know, advice for people like, you know, looking at what data they're ingesting and figuring out, you know, what do I need and what am I missing in terms of actually building out the graphs um, that kind of answer the questions that they want to address? 
Um, I, I think in the in the beginning, at least for the uh, the data filtering part, uh, there needs to be a data filtering part. Like uh, you have all of this data, and you need to sort of trim it to have the least things you need possible. Let's say. Um, and then there's also the another way is to think like in reverse about it. So what is a graph that you want, or is it what is an answer you want, and then base your data on that. That's also a, a trick to do. That makes sense. And then um, I think what caught a lot of people's eyes was the introduction of the concept of the kill chain. Like I, to me, I, I saw that in your slides before. I thought it was really fascinating. Can you speak a little bit towards, you know, um, you kind of touched on it a little bit, but, you know, at what point, like you said, you, you had a very particular question that just wasn't being answered from your data. You know, how does that, you know, what's the process in terms of, you know, enriching your data with these additional concepts as well as, you know, and just in general, can you elaborate a little bit on what, what was the kill chain and how that kind of, how does that relate back to like attack in terms of like, I'm thinking like a tactic, but maybe a little bit higher. Yeah, so um, it's interesting because uh, in MISP we have a whole lot of inf information about the, the sub techniques, but looking at it from a from a distance is also very useful to just see. Um, yeah, because data obfuscation, for example, is everywhere <laughs> across multiple steps. But it would, might be interesting to see which threat actors use data obfuscation. Maybe they use it at this point, the others use it at this point, and then we might be able to differentiate. So that's where the incentive came from. Um, but it would be nice to have a way to uh, basically say how the technique was used and incorporate that in the graph. So to have that uh, element in there. Awesome, that makes a lot of sense. And then um, I love the the kind of way you walked us through, like here's a graph of everything and then you slowly started carving up into exactly what you need. But kind of, you know, for those just starting off and building off their own graphs, you know, how do you know you know, how do you calibrate that? Like when you have too much data versus too little, is it, is it kind of working backwards, like you said, based on your ability to answer your questions or like what's, what's kind of your considerations during that process? So um, at least one easy way to see if your graph is good or not is like the connectivity level. So if everything is interconnected, then you need to start trimming somewhere. Uh, another uh, thing is also like, like I mentioned for the country and sectors, uh, if you just have nodes that are um, that don't really mean anything for your graph, just leave it out um, as well. And I guess it's it's like when you run the uh, clustering algorithms and if you don't find any cluster in your data, then it's also an indication that everything is just there's there's not much variance across the data. So you cannot really identify clusters and then you have a, a kind of a useless graph. <laughs> yeah, which might be a, an input problem. Yeah, that's like a flat, flat graph really doesn't mean much. It's almost a, an oxymoron. Yeah. But um, with that, yeah, thank you so much. There's a, there's a lot of interest building up in Slack. So definitely pop over there to you know, address your, your mini fans now. But thank you so much. And I'm going to punt it over to Adam to introduce our next speaker. Thank you. And, and thank you to both of you.